Hello, my name is Johnny X. Flakes III, the pastor of the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Here at 4th Street, we do what we do for the love of God through Jesus the Christ. We are Bible-based, Christ-centered, and Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound. We are very grateful, and we are so pleased that you have been led to join us this day. Our hope, our prayers are that you will find this message helpful for your continued spiritual growth in the will, the way, and the word of God. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Welcome to our worship experience. Good morning, 4th Street family. These are your announcements for the week of Sunday, August 29, 2021. Please join the music ministry on Saturday, September 11th, as they host the virtual event, Stilettos, Bowties, and Socks Extravaganza. For more information and to participate, please contact Sister Tandra Holyfield. Join the Grow to Glow Women's Ministry for a virtual book study starting September 21st through November 2nd. Get out of your head, stopping the spiral of toxic thoughts, a study in Philippians. Join the women's ministry each Tuesday from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The registration fee is $25. Please sign up by September 13th. Join us on Sunday, September 26th for our 
121st church anniversary. Please submit to the church office member information for those members who are celebrating 50 years of membership and for those members who are age 90 or more. Four Street masks are also available through the church office. The annual Boy Scout popcorn sale is happening now through November 21st. For more information, and to place an order, please contact a member of the Boy Scouts, Deacon Moore or Deacon G. The Girl Scouts' father and daughter dance has been postponed until further notice. Join us on Sunday, October 17th for Pink Out Worship Service in collaboration with the West Central Georgia Cancer Coalition Faith-Based Initiative. To learn more, please visit wcgcc.org. Congratulations to Brother Jesse Stanley for retiring after 40 years of service to the Georgia High School Association, Columbus Umpires, Football and Softball Association. As a reminder, every third Saturday of the month is a community food giveaway located at the Civic Center parking lot. The start time is 9 a.m. and is drive up only. Join us for virtual weekly Bible study each Sunday at 5 p.m. for deep sea fishing Bible study or on Mondays at 11 a.m. for spiritual brunch and on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for engaging and asking Bible study with the exception of the fourth Wednesday. Join us via Zoom or on Facebook Live. For more information on Zoom meeting invite details, visit our website at 4street.org or contact the church office. Also join us for virtual spiritual transformation church school classes held 9.30 a.m. each Sunday. For classes will be held for all ages. For more information on meeting invite details, please contact the church office. Virtual children's class is held each Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. For more information, please contact Sister Sharonda Porter. Sympathy is extended to Brother Kevin Scott and family for the passing of his grandmother, Sister Carol Scott of Charlotte, North Carolina. Please keep this family in your thoughts and in your prayers. Please mark your calendar in September for these upcoming events. Join us on Saturday, September 4th for the Pastor's Cabinet at 9.30 a.m. Sunday, September 5th will be First Sunday Communion Worship Service, and on Monday, September 6th is Labor Day. The church office will be closed. And on Tuesday, September 14th, will be the ministry's anniversary celebration at 7 p.m. At this time, we ask that you please direct your attention to the names of the members provided here on our prayer list. Please keep them and their families in your thoughts and in your prayers. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge and welcome all of our guests who are joining us in our virtual audience today. We're so glad that you joined and hope that you'll be led to join us again. May God bless you. If you're interested in accepting the invitation to discipleship, please contact the church office following services today at 706-324-2055 or email us at 4thstreetmbc at gmail.com. Tithing alternatives are as follows. You may mail your check or money order to P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901 or use the finance drop box located inside the educational building of the church. Please wear your mask or give online using Givelify. You can access Givelify from our mobile app or our website. Connect with us through virtual worship experience each Sunday via our website, forstreet.org, or on Facebook or YouTube starting at 7.45 a.m. and again at 10.45 a.m. Or tune in on the radio, Foxy 105 FM, starting at 8 a.m. each Sunday morning. Or on WRBL TV Channel 3 at 8.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast of our services. We also encourage you to download the 4th Street mobile app. Our church office hours are as follows. On Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you have information for the weekly announcements, please email them to 4th Street mbc at gmail.com by Wednesdays at 4 p.m. God bless and make it a great week. Hi, I'm Janice Granville, and I am excited to invite you to the 4th Street Baptist Church Grow to Glow Book Club. The book club this year is reading the book, Get Out of Your Head, Stopping the Spiral of Toxic Thought. 
It's a seven week book club and I'm sure you will enjoy it. It's an opportunity to enjoy and meet other Christian sisters in our community and make an investment in your own spiritual growth. What kind of investment you ask? It's an investment of your time and your treasure. Your time, it's only one night a week for seven weeks. It's on Tuesday nights starting at 6.30. The book club starts on September the 21st and all registrations need to be complete by September the 13th. The cost is only $25 and that includes materials. I really hope I see you there. Call the worship will be coming out the book of Psalms, Psalms 100. If you're able, will you please rise for the call of the worship? And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. This is where I get excited at. For the Lord is good. I think I say that one more time for somebody who didn't get that part right there. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all, not some, but all generations. Amen. This is your call to worship. Good morning, good morning to each and every one of you out there, radio, TV, by our app, or whichever way you're streaming in to us on this morning. We're delighted to have you join us on this day. It's time for our devotional period. We just welcome you. Now it's time for our article of faith. Number eight, regeneration. No, sorry, repentance and faith. We believe that scriptures teach that the repentance and faith are sacred duties and also inseparable graces wrought in our souls by regenerating spirit of God, whereby being deeply convinced of our, of our guilt, danger, and helplessness and of the way of our salvation by Christ, we turn to God with unfinished contrition, confession, and supplication for mercy. At the same time, heartily receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as our prophet, priest, and king and relying on him alone as our only and all-sufficient Savior. Uh, 
our church covenant. And it reads, <clears throat> having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, yeah. and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter this covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We are also engaged to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk safe and respectfully in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary with our deportment, to avoid all talent, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mind for the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now to him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be the power and glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for our morning hymn, Holy, 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 324. Please join in. Revelation chapter 19 verse 6 states hallelujah the Lord God Almighty reigns yes. oh, yeah. you reign God in heaven and in earth yeah. you are holy and that's why we bow before you yeah. with our hearts in our service and in our minds, we thank you now thank you, Jesus. for your Holy Spirit thank you, Jesus. who gives us the unction to do what we do, My Lord. to empower us and to chastise us. We thank you now Amen. for who you are and to whom we belong. We ask now for your spirit to embolden our pastor, the singer of the song this morning, the organist, the musician, the deacons, the pulpit, the listening audience, 
that we may be touched by what you will have our pastor to say this morning. We lift us all up in the name of Jesus who died that we might live. Mm. Let amen. all of God's people say amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit are nine qualities that are shown through everyone who believes in Jesus Christ and has the Holy Spirit living in them. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, we automatically want to show these things. According to Galatians 5th chapter, 22nd and the 23rd verses, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Today, I want to briefly talk about patience. Patience is being able to stay calm when something might take too long. It is also being able to deal with pain or trouble in a calm way without getting too angry or upset. When we hear patience, we normally think of it the first way that I described, like being able to wait our turn to speak in class or wait for our parents to get off the phone to tell them something. But God wants us to remember to make sure we're being patient when we might be uncomfortable, like when we're really, really hungry and it's taking a while to get our food, or when our younger brother, sister, or family member is upset and we want them to stop crying already. It's important for us to be patient then too. Ephesians, the fourth chapter and the second verse says, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. So let's remember to always be kind and patient to show love even when we're uncomfortable. And if you find yourself struggling with that, then just pray or ask someone you trust to help you pray that God helps you with that. It is my prayer that you all have a great week and a great Sunday with your families. our worship experience and we thank you for coming and uniting with us through the various virtual platforms we pray that you are continuing to practice physical distancing we pray that you are continuing to stay connected one with another we pray that you participate as much as you can in feeding your soul, your mind, your spirit, your body. That your faith will not waver as we walk through this pandemic. So as we come we want to ask that you will join us as we go to God in prayer. And following, we will ask Sister Katina Frazier if she will come and bless us prior to the bringing of the, the word of God. Dear God, we come now and we thank you for another day. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for the opportunity for this remnant to come to praise and to worship your holy name. And those in the streaming live congregation, those who are connected with us this morning on this Solidarity Sunday, lift up your holy name because you're worthy to be praised Lord we're coming down to the end of this eighth month in the 2021 year you've been with us 
as you've promised through the ups and through the downs through the spikes of this coronavirus and now this new delta variant you've been with us even those in hospitals you're with them right now those on ventilators you're with them right now but we know heavenly father that doctors don't have the last word but we don't ignore the doctor's information but we thank god we know a great physician in jesus the christ who's offered us the greatest healing that can be offered and that is eternal life he's made a way through the cross at Calvary to extend salvation to those who would come to believe in his only begotten son Jesus the Christ who shed an innocent blood to atone for our sin to reconcile us back unto God making a path back to God and so Lord we thank you for those who love you thank you for those who believe in you we thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for all you've done. We can't thank you enough. You are deserving of all of the praise and all of the thanks. Now we ask your blessings now upon those who have contracted coronavirus, those who have contracted Delta variant maybe in quarantine at home maybe in quarantine in other places some may have had to go into the hospital some may be on ventilators we ask your blessings upon them as only you can keep them in the palm of your hands increase their oxygen levels allow them to come off of respirators and ventilators if it's a holy and divine will we ask you would bless their families with peace bless them with comfort and looking beyond the hills from which cometh their help knowing that all their help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth bless the children bless the parents who are faced with challenges day to day as they continue to entrust their children into the hands of the school system. But Lord, we pray for this superintendent that he will guide with wisdom. He's not afraid to pivot and pause to protect the children, to protect the, children, the teachers, the educators, to, to protect everyone who's connected with the Muskogee County school system. Let him be able to, to make a decision, not just for the few, but for the majority. Give him strength, give him courage to do the right thing. But even if they keep coming, we pray, oh Heavenly Father, you'll hold them in the palm of your hands. Give them strength, give them peace and patience. Now, Lord, we ask that you would bless those in hospitals and nursing homes and ICUs and CCUs. Those at home sick and shut in. Help them to know you have not, not left them. Help them to depend on your promise. That you'll never leave them nor forsake them. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you will continue to bless your church. Bless this, your church. Bless churches all across the land. That, Lord, we will continue to guide your flock with wisdom. Continue to guide your flock under the power and the presence and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we ask that you will continue to send us who you want us to have and what we need. Bless this message that will go forward. And we pray that you will bless the hearers. That it does not land on stony ground. It does not land in thorns and thistles. But, Lord, it will land in good soil and will bring forth spiritual strength spiritual transformation spiritual health 
somebody will come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. Bless now in the name of Jesus. We lift this prayer up to you. Those in the streaming congregation, bless now. Those who are the remnant here, bless now. In the name of Jesus, bless. As only you know how. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. Let us receive Sister Katina Frazier as she comes to bless us through song.
Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's give God thanks. That as we are going through our trials, our tests, and our challenges, our crises, it's good to be confident in knowing that he knows our name. I don't know where you are in your situation. I don't know where you are in your travel on this journey called life. But I just want you to know I'd rather travel with him than without him. I'd rather know that he knows my name than anybody else. It, it, it doesn't matter if the president knows my name. It doesn't matter if the governor knows my name. It doesn't matter if anybody else in high esteem knows my name. I am glad that he knows. I just have to go ahead and call the he. It's a personal pronoun. Yes, it is. But I just have to go ahead and call he. I got to call his name. His name is Jesus. I am glad. I am joyous that he knows my name. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of the shadow of death, I'm glad he knows my name. I'm glad that he walks with me and talks with me and tell me that I am his own. I'm glad he holds my hand. Anybody in the streaming congregation glad that he holds your hand even while you're sleeping at night? Hold your hand while y'all in the classroom, while you're on your job, while you're riding in your car, while you're flying through the air. He holds your hands. To God be the glory. Thank you, Katina. Thank you, musicians, for reminding us of the joy of knowing that he knows our name to God be the glory I pray that will encourage somebody who's connected with us in worship today I was challenged last week Brother Perder, Reverend Dickerson, Deacon Tharp. I was at a place where I was praying and asking God to truly help me because I was stuck. Reverend Dickerson, I, I was stuck. And as I began to look globally and looking at the Afghanistan situation, the unrest as I began to look nationally at the unrest across the various states and the violence as I began to look across the nation with the spiking of this Delta variant and yet people still gather looking at the unrest where there are those who have politicized whether you wear a mask or not and listening to the news and hearing about the maximized utilization of beds and hospitals because of the increase of this coronavirus and many going in and many of them who have not been vaccinated finding themselves being placed in hospital units. Listening to the unrest in marriages. The unrest around the nation as it relates to our children being sent back into person to person learning and I continue to pray Lord what will you have me to give to your people on Sunday morning
Holy Spirit, guide me. Lead me to what we would need to say in this period of unrest. And he led me to a passage of scripture and I said, no, I preached that. <laughs> I preached. He said, no, you, you need to look at this again. And I went to this very, for me, a very comforting scripture. A promise that Jesus has given to all believers. And I want to weigh anchor. I want to just land here just for a moment, if you would allow me. But I want to give a framework of thinking. I want to give a framework that we can think out of as we're traveling through this pandemic, as we've been traveling through this pandemic, as you are in your various places, your various uh, uh, locations. I want to continue to give a framework that we can think out of that we can evaluate when we are faced with these crises in our lives these particular circumstances that we are facing day in and day out I want to introduce to some reintroduce to others remind us of this framework this point of reference that we can look at that can help us really examine and evaluate where we are in terms of our spiritual growth as it relates to what I want to introduce and talk with you about today so let me just go ahead before I go to the passage of scripture that I want to come out of I want to ask that the media ministry pull up the model. Yes, the model. The model. It's so encouraging when I hear members refer to the model and I hear so many saying, Pastor, that really helped frame some things for me to really look at. It gives me a point of reference. It gives me a framework that I can think out of. So I want to just run past it because many of you have been introduced to it, but I want to just use this to set up what I want to really um, teach and preach on today. So, so I want to ask the, the media ministry if they would pull up the model, and I want to go to the first PowerPoint, the first slide, that introduce us to this person that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. He calls this person the natural person. The natural person is really the unsaved person. This is the person, as you would see, the S represents self. The plus outside of the circle represents the cross, Christ. And the circles that goes around the, the circle uh, are what is called attractions of the world. But Paul lifts up in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 through in verse 18, he says, the natural person has no awareness of God in his life. The cross of Jesus is foolishness to him or her. He places himself on the throne and is spiritually disconnected. Let me just go ahead and translate that. Is spiritually dead. This person has no connection. Self sits on the throne. Their perception, their paradigm, their belief system has been shaped and grounded and rooted in worldviews. The worldview of independence, the worldview of individualism, the worldview of, of relativism, the worldview of materialism. Uh, it has been grounded and shaped in a humanistic way of thinking. And so this is a natural person. So we're gonna go to the next slide. If we can go to the next slide. This is the carnal person, still really the natural person because this is the carnal person uh, Paul talks about for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind the worldly mind the person that basically is still looking for their own pleasure 
is enmity. That word enmity means is hostility against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. This carnal person, even though if you look at the cross, it has gone inside of the circle, but self still sits on the throne, which suggests this person say they're saved, they believe they're saved, but there's no evidence of their salvation because they continue to pursue worldly things. Their priorities have not changed. Their focus has not changed. So their profession is always under question. And so this is the person who is religious. They go through the motion. They, they are ceremonious. They, they wear crosses. They, wear, they take their Bibles. They may come to church when we were able to come before the pandemic. There are a number of people across the country who say they're saved, but there's no evidence. There is no fruit. So this person is a religious person. This person does not have really a relationship personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So self still sits on the throne. Let's go to the next slide, please. This is the spiritually immature person. Look at where the cross is now. The cross is on the throne. Self has been dethroned. It does not mean self has completely uh, diminished, but this person is an immature baby, baby in Christ. If you can notice that their focus has changed, their priority is beginning to change. They're having more of a desire for worship. They're having a desire to have an ongoing prayer life. They have a desire to really study God's word because they realize now based on the Holy Spirit and their conversion and their profession and their, their, their transforming by the Holy Spirit. He is reshaping the way they think. He is shifting their paradigm. He is beginning to, 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 to change their priorities and the focus as they walk in this life. So they have more of a desire to please Christ. They are looking at things through a Christ-like perspective as they learn and they, the word of God takes root in their mind. This is a spiritual immature person. They still have struggles. Faith is not as deep as they would desire, but they continue to, 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 to desire to please God through Jesus Christ and becoming more sensitive to the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Here's the spiritually maturing person. This person has a Christ centered life who has the mind that has the mind that's in first corinthians chapter number two around about verse 15 this person has the mind that mind of christ which means that person has the attitude of christ his affections are set on things above her affections are set on things above. Look at where the cross is. Look at where the S is. The S is now outside of the circle. Look at what the attractions are for the person now who's maturing in Christ. They have a consistent prayer life. They are constantly in the word of God, whether it's individually in terms of reading and devotional study and also collective study with seasoned saints. Bible studies, church school, they have a desire to thirst after the word of God. And then you have the person who, who worships, have a thirst to worship, have a thirst for worship. Because they are continuously learning that worship is not about them, it's all about Christ. And then they have a desire to witness to other natural carnal people they have come to realize that their purpose is being set aside for the purpose of God through Jesus Christ the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to use them that others may see Christ in and through them and so the question that I want to ask you as we move through this sermon which one are 
you? What mindset do you have? Which lens are you looking at as it relates to your coming face to face with crises, challenges, even internal struggles? How are you approaching life? So let us go to this passage of scripture. It's found in John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's preparing to go to Calvary to die. Listen to what he says to his disciples, his followers, the twin. In verse 27. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Amen. I just want to read it one more time. That's the first pass, Reverend Dickerson and Brother Perter. But let's read it for a second one. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. I would suggest that you take that and every time that you are facing unrestful situations. The Bible says he has given us the power of the Holy Spirit who will call back to remembrance all whatsoever he has taught us. But I want to use as a sermon title, I want to tag the text this morning. What is the source of your peace? Young person, young adult, middle age or golden ages. What is the source of your peace? If you are a believer and follower of Jesus the Christ, you have his peace. Perhaps, my brothers and sisters, that's news to you. Maybe you've been struggling and straining to find peace in the midst of overwhelming chaos and personal crisis. Maybe after discovering that being a Christian doesn't take away or take anyone out of all life's problems, stresses and strains, struggles, and you've wondered where that elusive peace is. Anybody been there? Maybe you begin to think and say to yourself, you know it's a promise. Yes, in scripture, I just read it twice. I've read it so many times. But you just don't know why you aren't experiencing the peace that Christ has promised you. And you might argue with someone or maybe take a position with what I might say today. Those who may tell you that you already have his peace. But I want you to come close. I have, a, have some good news. It's not my news, it's his news. Here's a news flash. I'm telling you, even if you in your mind are saying, but I don't experience, I don't feel like I have his peace, I'm telling you anyway, those who are believers in Jesus the Christ, you have what he says 
you have. You already have it. Jesus actually gave his peace to all his disciples, true disciples, then and he has promised it to those disciples who would come to believe in him right now. Jesus promised peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, oh, my brothers and sisters, so you don't have the kind of peace the world tries to give. The world tries to give you peace in all worldly things, world attractions. But I just come by to just share with you today, you have the peace that Jesus gives. The same peace he had and showed that day in the back of the boat while a storm raged around him and the disciples. You do know over in Mark chapter 4 when Jesus was in the hinder part of the boat and the disciples came and they screamed out, Jesus, do thy care that we will perish. Jesus was not apprehensive. He was not afraid. But Jesus stood and spoke to the waves and spoke to the wind. The wind laid down like a lamb. The waves calmed. Because they recognize the sovereignty of God in flesh, creator. So the question is, why doesn't all Christians experience this supernatural peace that is given by Jesus? Is that a question that you've ever asked yourself? Because we must intentionally, purposefully, guided by the Holy Spirit, choose to live in the peace he gave us. Not that he's going to give us, he's already given it. It isn't automatic, I'm sorry. It's not something that you can just say, I just, I was born with it. No, that's not, that's, 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 that's not true. It doesn't just automatically come, that, that's, that's not true. Just doesn't drop it out of heaven and just say, poof, that you got it. No, 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 no. You must be. You've got to be. Born again. From above. By the word of God and an act of the Holy Spirit. By faith in God through Jesus the Christ. Even though we already have it, we tend to pursue peace on the world's terms. The world, I want to say to you, hook, wink, and bamboozle us into believing when we are stressed, when we are successful, accomplished, handsome, pretty, rich, got a pretty figure, famous, and or educated. We will have peace. It holds out an ideal that people can never attain. And those who do attain that find out it isn't all it's cracked up to be. It promises peace, but can't deliver peace. And in the process, it leaves us empty, angry, frustrated with no peace. Peace is a gift, my brothers and sisters, and a choice. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from Jesus, God in flesh. But it's also a choice that we live by that's being produced by the Holy Spirit. We've learned how to think and practice some unhealthy ways to quench the Holy Spirit's produced peace so we don't actually experience Christ's peace. What are you talking about, preacher? We know how to worry when he say, don't worry. We stress out and then say people cause us to stress out. Focus on the future, 
It's all right, but then the future becomes an uncertainty and that causes stress. And get into conflict with other people, other people in our homes, our marriage, our jobs, co-workers, children, with parents, including our bosses on our job. We've seen the peace that the world gives dissipate really quickly. Because if it's based on happenings, when those happenings stop happening, then our peace leaves. Based on the way the world has hookwinked and bamboozled us into believing that one's peace is attached and rooted in the worldly accomplishments, the worldly materialism. When we lose it all, we lose peace and hope. Joy is never to be found. But we who are disciples of Jesus the Christ know by now how to be intentional about training our hearts, training our minds to shift our focus and experience the peace we've been given by Christ himself. We really can choose to live in peace and experience Jesus, the Christ's peace in our lives in spite of the storms, in spite of the tsunamis of life, in spite of the crises, in spite of overwhelming stress, we who are believers in Jesus of Christ, as we grow and we mature in the will, the way, and the word of God, we come to know and experience Jesus the Christ's peace in our lives. But we as believers and disciples of Jesus the Christ, we must know what is the source of our peace. Because we have so many distractions that attacks the mind. So people tend to search for peace from one of three sources. Are you ready? They tend to search for peace from one of three sources. Here's source number one. Inward. Everybody say inward. The natural, unsaved, carnal, religious person advocates this approach and will tell you that you just need to look within. Have you all ever heard that? Just look in and just find and connect with your inner self, your, your, your best self. That's the new age movement teaching. They tell you that it's already there. You just need to find it. You can do that through meditation, yoga, relaxation, centering on oneself, and whatever else it takes to find harmony with the cosmos. Have y'all heard that? But oh my brothers and sisters, it's not out there somewhere. You can't depend on circumstances and other people to give it to you. You have to discover it yourself. That's what they say. Somewhere deep inside, they continue to tell you. Now, my brothers and sisters, let me just go ahead and submit to you. There, there's some truth to that approach in some way. Circumstances and other people really don't provide peace. We know that. Those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ. And there is some value in going deep within. But what source are you going to find there? Is the question. Meditation and relaxation are means in a process. Not sources. The search within would have to lead to something reliable and true. The source inward is not the answer. In and of itself. 
So here's source number two. We have the journey that many have believed and who are still believing that it's inward. And then you have source number two, outward, outward. The natural unsaved current religious person are told and believe that to achieve, to conquer their fears, to control their emotions and their environment, to perform in ways that lead to lasting peace. They are told it's out there. They are to discover it by accomplishing something that brings them peace. Getting into a good school and making good grades, finding the right person to be with, finding a meaningful and profitable career track, having a nice home and driving a nice car, creating a secure income. The idea is that if they achieve, conquer, and perform, their desires and circumstances will align and they will have the peace they are looking for. However, my brothers and sisters, the problem with this approach is that the peace that is out there is always just out of reach. There's never enough achievement and success to make life truly peaceful. There's always a situation or two that need to be fixed. There's never quite enough money to completely satisfy us. So I just want to crystallize this point by rem I'm reminded of a story about an American oil tycoon. Some of you all may be familiar with the name J. Paul Getty. He was the richest person in the world at one time. At one point, bringing in, listen to this, $20 million a day. And he was consumed with keeping it going and getting more and more. He was divorced five times and alienated from his children. Often prioritizing money over their health and welfare. Near the end of his life, listen, he said, he would gladly give his millions away for just one lasting marital success. He had spent his life accumulating more and more and still had no peace. No matter how much he tried to buy it, it just, it just wasn't for sale. Not this kind of peace. It wasn't out there. Whose lens What's the source of your peace? Come close. Eastern traditions tend to emphasize the inward source of peace. While Western traditions have gravitated toward the outward source. Some of these approaches are not inherently wrong in and of themselves. There's nothing wrong with breathing deeply, relaxing, and centering on one hand, or earning money, making good grades, and searching for the right relationship on the other. Those can be great skills to have, but they are methods and endeavors that work much better as byproducts or outcomes of peace. Not the source of it. They can't ground us 
in reality. They aren't dependable. It will lead you to a, a place of insecurity. A place of instability. So here's source number three. The one that grounds us in truth is upward. It's upward. The spiritually immature person is learning and the spiritually maturing person has learned and trust peace is the person, not a condition. The person, Jesus said, he doesn't give the kind of peace the world gives. He gives his own peace. The spiritually immature person is beginning. The spiritually maturing person trusts in him. Not in their circumstances. Spiritually maturing person depend on him. Jesus the Christ. And abide in in him the Holy Spirit helped the spiritually immature person and the spiritually maturing person exercise faith if they are clear the object of their faith is not inward in and of themselves or outward but it's in Jesus the Christ Spiritually immature person and a spiritual maturing person exercise love and obedience to the will, the way, and the word of Jesus Christ. And he gives his peace to the spiritually immature and the spiritually maturing person, which is produced by the Holy Spirit. The spiritually immature, spiritually maturing person learn and believe in you don't discover it within or reach for it outside of themselves. They come to believe you receive it by faith. You receive it by faith in Jesus the Christ. He's promised to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. When they turn from their sin and invite it, Christ to forgive them and come into their lives the Holy Spirit took up residence in them and they were sealed with the Holy Spirit those who would come to believe in Jesus the Christ as their personal Savior it's not based on feelings or emotion it's based on faith faith in Jesus the Christ believing that you have exactly what he says you have the Holy Spirit lives inside of those who believe and through him they experience God's sovereignty over a chaotic world. The goodness of his nature and the peace and calm of knowing him through Jesus the Christ. In fact, peace is produced by the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.22 tells us that regardless of where the circumstances go up or down, Relationships are good or bad, or the stock market rises or falls. We can have a supernatural peace that transcends human understanding. He will keep us, as the Isaiah writer writes in Isaiah 26, 3. He will keep us in perfect peace as our mind are stayed on him it is not stayed on my crisis in my marriage it's not stayed on my crisis on my job it's not stayed on my crisis in other relations it's not stayed and that's how Satan tried to pull away distract us from that which Jesus himself has given us many times we grieve the Holy Spirit because the object of our faith is more in our stress moment. The object of our faith is in our crisis moment. The object of our faith is in our circumstances, whether we have it or not. But our circumstances does not impact 
the peace that God through Jesus the Christ produced by the Holy Spirit has given us. And as I get ready to go to my seat, Reverend Dickinson, I'm reminded, Reverend Perter, 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 I'm reminded of the eagle. The eagle has come to understand, Sister Tandra, that when they see a tornado, they have come to believe and understand they are not to run from it because the expansion of their wings, the heaviness of their wings, if they try and outrun the tornado, they could crash to their death. But what they have realized, instead of running from the tornado, they fly towards the tornado to get into the center of the tornado's eye and just stretch their wings to ride the wind. And the more the wind, the heavier and the tumultuous winds that, that, that's, that's in that tornado, they learn to just spread their wings and the wind underneath their wings will rise will continue to carry them higher as long as they keep their wings stretched and they're depending upon the wind to carry them above the storm They will go from to and fro, but they just ride the wind until the wind lift them above the storm. And I just come by to tell you, when you believe in the one who came down through 42 generations, conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit the one who walked the dusty streets of Palestine giving sight to the blind making lame men women walk but going to a hill called Calvary I love Jesus because he's not just a tell me Jesus but Jesus is a show me Jesus he went to that old rugged cross in the midst of chaos, in the midst of trauma, strain, and stress. But Jesus prayed to his father. He prayed to his father that if this cup can pass from me, let it pass. But Jesus says, not my will, but thy will be done. And Jesus went on to Calvary. He didn't allow Calvary to distract him from his mission that his father has sent him on. And I just look at the cross with Jesus was a hanging bleeding and dying I never seen in the scripture where Jesus fretted or he did not show fear I didn't see where Jesus tried to fight or where Jesus tried to retaliate but I hear through the holy scriptures Jesus showing us in the midst of dying he prayed a prayer father forgive thee for they know not what they do he prayed a prayer that God will extend grace and mercy he prayed a prayer that the whole world would 
know his unconditional love and I just come by to tell you when you have his peace no matter how stormy it gets it doesn't matter what the crisis is the object of your faith should still be on the one who was hanging between the sixth and the ninth hour giving up his life dying for you and for me taking on the wrath of God taking on the condemnation of God taking on the judgment of God coming to pay the penalty of sin the Bible says he came to pay the penalty of sin but he came to break the dominion of sin but one of these old days he's coming back to deliver all of those who believe in Jesus Christ he will deliver them from the presence of sin that's why I loved the lesson this morning when it talked about 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 when it said those of us who have a relationship with Jesus Christ this world is not our home we're just pilgrims passing through we have a house we have a home not made with a hands eternal into heaven and that's what Jesus came to make a way back to reconcile us back unto God that we will have a home that we can say come on stress come on death come on coronavirus come on Delta variant because the object of my faith is not based on the absence of me coming off the respirator not based on the absence of me coming out of the hospital it's not coming on the absence it's not based on the absence of whether I get the chemotherapy or radiation treatment it's not based on the absence of me not getting sick but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I'll stand in the midst of cancer in the midst of COVID in the midst of the pandemic in the midst of not having a job in the midst of a marriage that's going south my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the one who died on Calvary's hill between the sixth to the ninth hour on Christ who cried out is fit it is tantalus time. I paid it in full. I've completed the mission that my father sent me on. Oh, Christ locked his head in his shoulder and gave up the ghost. Oh, Christ, the one that Joseph Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate, requested his dead body. Oh, Christ, the one who stayed in that tomb old Friday night. Oh, Christ, the one who stayed in that tomb all Saturday morning oh Christ the one who stayed in that tomb all Saturday night oh Christ the solid rock I'll stand the one who got up early early Sunday morning the resurrection of Jesus the Christ the Prince of Peace was raised from the dead with all power resurrection power saving power peace giving power all power in heaven and in earth and I'm so glad he walked around for 40 days showing himself to his disciples showing himself to 500 or more letting them know that God's promise is absolutely true God's power is absolutely real he ascended to sit on the right hand throne of the father one of these old days he's coming back again is there anybody here who knows he's coming 
back again. But he promised, he promised, I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit with you. And the Holy Spirit is going to come. He's going to take up residence in you. He's going to produce what I promise. He's going to produce my peace, my peace. You can't find it on a luxury cruise. My peace, you can't find it. Come on, somebody, in a job. My peace, you can't find it in another relationship. My peace can only be found in the one who promised to give you his peace. The power of the Holy Spirit who produces that peace. And you can then sing it. <laughs> this peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. Let everything fall around me. My peace and my joy is not predicated on my circumstances. It's not rooted on my external circumstances. It's not found inward in and of myself. It's not found outward. But it's found upward. Looking unto the one. Who provided salvation, eternal life. The gift of the Holy Spirit and his peace. So I just come by to say, you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have, whether you feel it or not, you have his peace. Go on! When you're in your trials and tribulation and choose to just walk in peace. Spread your wings. Let the Holy Spirit carry you through it. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be having any trepidation. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to worry. Just spread your wings. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Spirit will guide and keep you. Remind you of everything he has promised. And it's not for you really. It's for his glory. It's for his honor. It's for his praise. Because somebody's going to ask you, why are you so calm in the midst of all this stuff? Why, why are you so calm in the midst and you don't seem anxious? You don't seem troubled. You can tell him, yeah, I feel, but faith says that I have what he says I have. So I can walk by faith and not by what I see. I can walk by faith and not by what I feel. Because of the one that lives inside of me. It's not me, it's who lives inside of me. I can... Say he knows my name. <laughs> he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me in the midst of my storm, I am his own. The joy we share. Carry them. None other has ever known. God bless you. But let me just go ahead and say to you, those who are out there, when the streaming live congregation. If you do not believe in this Jesus, you keep trying to look for your source of peace inward and outward, and not in the one who promised it, then you will struggle. You'll want to give up, you'll want to throw in the towel, you'll say, I'm just tired. But I'm here to tell you, when you're growing in the will, the way, and the word of God, storms can come every day. Tsunamis can come every day. Uncertainties can come every day. But when you have the faith in Jesus the Christ and what he's given to you, you can say without a shadow of a doubt, I have his peace. And I'm going to walk in his peace, trusting everything is going to be all right. We want to invite you to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The person who gives peace, but who provides salvation, who provides eternal life, will you come? The Bible says you confess with your mouth and believe sincerely in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. 
do not have that relationship, then call this number 706-324-2055. Let them know that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your desire is to be baptized. Call that number 706-324-2055 and leave your name and your number that we can follow up with you. If you are walking in your own strength, you say I know I have a relationship but I'm not growing in the will the way and the word of God we pray that you will come and you will be you will rededicate your life recommit your life to Christ that you will do it his way and not your way that you will you will you will dedicate to study dedicate to stay close to the fellowship and be willing to be around seasoned saints that you can mature in his will we ask that you will call that same number 706-324-2055 let them know you desire to recommit rededicate your life to Christ and be here at the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church if you relocated to the surrounding area because of a job relocation military reassignment maybe you're matriculating through one of the colleges the universities maybe through one of the technical schools or one of the community colleges in the surrounding area we invite you to unite here at Fort Street Missionary Baptist Church where you too can grow in the will, the way, and the word of God. Call this same number, 706-324-2055. Let them know that you desire to unite here at Fort Street Missionary Baptist Church. To God be the glory. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. We pray that you will walk in his peace. Now we want to ask that you will prepare to bring the tithe and the offerings we thank God for you we believe that Jesus is a generous Jesus God is a generous God and the Holy Spirit is a generous Holy Spirit and if you're connected with God through Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit then he has also made you generous and he says this is the way you demonstrate the generosity by bringing the tithe and the offering you can go to Givelify right now and you can go ahead and go to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Please make sure it is the 4th Street spelled out. It's not the 4. It's the 4th Street, F-O-U-R-T-H. The 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. The emblem, look for the emblem, the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb. And bring your tithe and offering right now. If you choose not to do it online, then we ask that you would take the provided envelope by the church. And we ask that you would fill that out designate your tithe and your offering and then make sure that your information your contact information is updated and bring it through the week Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 10 to 9 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. you can drop it off in the Christian Education Building in the inside drop-off box we just ask that you will wear your mask and practice five to six feet distancing you can also drop it off on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Christian Education Building, the inside drop-off box. Or you can mail it in. Take that same envelope that the church has provided, designate your tithe and your offering, make sure your information is correct, and then put it into an addressed envelope. Address it to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia, 31901 and mail it in we need you to continue to support the Lord's church by sending in the time and the offer we thank you for those who are continuing to support and we continue to appeal to those to continue to give according to how God has blessed you dear gracious father we thank you for the tithers we thank you for the offering we thank you for our guests we thank you for our friends will continue to provide as you provided for them now bless their homes bless their health and their strength now we ask that you continue to help us to be good stewards over that you've entrusted that we may give you glory honor, and praise and we can continue to advance your kingdom it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray amen God bless you God keep you as our prayer we're going to ask that this evening that you would connect with us as we Go into our deep sea fishing. At 5 o'clock, we ask that you would connect through the Zoom, Facebook Live, or call in. We're studying 1 Samuel. 
we're in chapter number 11 and those who would like to enter into a, the spiritual brunch on Monday at 11 a.m. we're in the gospel according to Luke fourth chapter join us by streaming Facebook live zoom or call in and on Wednesdays engaging asking at 6 p.m. If you have any questions that you've ever wanted to ask, clarifying a particular scripture, please come on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. to Engaging Asking through Zoom, Facebook Live, or call in. Dear Gracious Father, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for the message. To be reminded that you've given us your peace. But help us to examine based on the model what lens are we looking through are we looking inward outward or upward it depends on where we are in our connection with God through Jesus Christ that will determine the source of our peace now Lord we ask that you would dismiss us from this place but never never from your grace Never from your presence, your provision, your power, nor your protection. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus, from whom all blessings flow. Let us all sing. just say to those who had high school football games on this past weekend God bless you for those who were victorious we thank God for you God bless you to God be the glory amen and those who tasted the agony of defeat we pray for you and we pray that another Friday or Saturday will be granted that you will have another opportunity to taste victory until that time, walk in his peace. Power to all. May his blessings be upon you. Walk in his peace. You may be. Thank you for joining us. We pray that you were encouraged, inspired, and yes, even convicted to believe in Jesus the Christ as your personal Savior and Lord and that you will give Christ your life. We want you to know that he desires a love, trust, obedient relationship with you because he loves you. And we here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church love you too. We want you to know that here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, you can come again and you can join us in worship, Bible study, and we also have other ministries through helping us to continue to grow in the will and the way of the Word of God through our virtual and through our Facebook Live and through Zoom. We want you to know that you can find out more about us at our website at the number four T 
THST.org. The number four, THST.org. Or you can call us at 706-324-2055. 706-324-2055. We want you to know you're always welcome. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Thank you.